Morning, everybody. Lee Lowell here from SmartOptionSeller.com. Got another edition of our Saturday Synopsis for today, Saturday, March 5th, 2022. Welcome back. I was gone last weekend, so no update last weekend. So today we're going to hit for the last two weeks. What's happened in the market? A lot's been happening. So let's jump right in. What do we do with the Saturday Synopsis? We look at charts. That's what we do. I try to show you what I've been seeing in the markets, individual stocks, indexes. I show my technical indicators, support resistance levels. Try to show you what I've been, what I've learned over my last 30 years in the business. Technical analysis, that's what I do. Helps me get in and out of trades. So let's get going. Let's open up the charts and see what we got going on here. We'll actually look at some commodity charts as well today, considering the news out of Russia slash Ukraine. That is the biggest uh, news-driven headline that's that's moving the markets over the last week. Obviously, there's a lot of stress out there, a lot of fear. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know how this thing's going to end. And we wish uh, this thing would end quickly, peacefully. We wish everyone in that conflict um, to be safe. And uh, we want this over with quickly because in terms of the market, the market doesn't like uncertainty. So if you're a follower of the market, you've probably seen what's been happening. When there's a lot of uncertainty in the market and there's a lot of bad news items out there, the first inclination is to sell. So we've been having some selling in the market and we're going to take a look at those things. So yes, I talk about the fundamentals of, of a company in the long term. The stock market moves or our stocks, companies' stock chart or stock price moves on its underlying fundamentals over the long run, right? If the company is producing profitable products and producing earnings quarter after quarter, the stock price will go up in the long run. But in these short-term movements, whenever we have large, big headlines, news headlines, especially what's happening in, in, in Ukraine, that will drive the market temporarily until that you know, dissipates, that news item goes away, and then the next thing comes along. But these big geopolitical news events have an outsized effect on the market in the short run. So we have to contend with that, unfortunately. But in the long run, the underlying fundamentals of the company will project its stock price. But, you know, if you're here to trade on a shorter term basis, you have to contend with these things. So let's see what's been going on. We always open up our chart and I look at a daily chart on the screen here. This runs about two years worth time, two years back in time. I look at the open, high, low, close bars. I don't use candlesticks. It's just not something that I've ever done. And um, I look at support and resistance. I've got a few indicators on my charts. I tell new people that come along here each week what I have on my charts. I've got three moving averages. I've got a 20-day, 50-day, 200-day, all simple. And I have the RSI indicator down here, 14-day RSI. So we always look at the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500, the SPY as, it, as it's called. It gives us the, the best overall view of the market as a whole. And uh, some of these lines you'll see, these blue lines and these triangle lines are just things that I put on the chart to help me see, you know, patterns. These are all patterns that develop over time. These patterns repeat over time. Human nature doesn't change. You got people coming and going in the market all the time. So the psychology uh, of players in the market, greed, fear and greed always take over. And that tends to lead to certain patterns being repeated over and over again. And certain support and resistance levels um, come into play all the time. So we look for patterns. I, I, you'll see drawings on my chart, and, and, and I'll explain them as we get to them. So let's just look at the chart of the, the SPY. And basically what you want to do is you want to follow the price action. What does that mean? You want to see which way a stock or index has been trending over time. How long? A couple months, a year, you know, just to see which way it's come. Obviously, we can see the S&P 500 since the pandemic low here in March 2020 has just been on a, a run higher. Nice, slow, moving higher. That's what This is what's called following the price action. And if you if you've been long in the market, you can use these pullbacks to help you decide when it may be time to get into the market. And, and we've got the 20 day moving average here, the blue line, we've got the 50 day moving average here. And this down here is the 200 day moving average. So as you can see, the market has bounced nicely off the 20 day or the 50 day as it's been going higher. And then what we hit uh, right around January 1st, 2022, 
we hit the top and we've been trading off or selling off since, okay? And then this Russia-Ukraine crisis has kept the market at on its, you know, on edge. And, and selling usually occurs with things like that. So what are we seeing right now? Well, here's where we ended yesterday, Friday, March 4th, down here. Um, this, this long candle, which occurred um, last Thursday, so about uh, nine days ago or so, we had this big one-day move down. You know, the market opened deep in the red that day and had bounced nicely Thursday and, and the Friday, last Friday bounced again. So had what I talked about is typically when we see a washout in the market where, you know, people ask me, where, when's the low going to happen? When are we going to see the low or the bottom? Well, obviously no one ever knows where the bottom is. But if you've been watching markets long enough, you've been watching charts long enough, you'll know that when we have a huge, huge, huge gap down in the market where the market opens deep in the red, Sometimes that could signify a bottom, a, a temporary or even a long-term bottom for now, where everyone just kind of throws in the towel and they give up. And then that's exactly when the bottom occurs in this particular case. So here's you know a, a bottom and it bounced. And so last Friday ended up here, which was pretty good. So what we had this week is that the market moved up and it came into resistance to the, this downtrending 20-day moving average. So we had the nice bounce off the low last Friday, last Thursday, Friday, and then Mon and then this week we kind of chopped around here. The market got some gumption and rallied right up to this descending or sloping downwards 20-day moving average. You can see it, it just connected with it right here. And usually after a market you know, falls through some technical levels, now you can see here, I have this triangle, this congestion pattern right here, these two blue lines. That's, this is what's called a congestion pattern where a market starts to get tighter and tighter, and eventually it's going to have to pop in one direction or another. And it usually pops in the direction from where it came. So we were on a high, it started getting lower, the market started trading lower, got into the congestion pattern. So typically the market, once it breaks out either side, it typically will go in the direction from where it came. So it was coming from higher, moving lower. So we had the down move. It, it came out of this triangle pattern to the downside. So I wasn't here last week. So my last update was this pat this fri last Friday here, and I liked how it bounced, and it was it, it it you know it felt good to have that bounce. But I had been mentioning that the selling might not be over yet. So what we got this week was that. We got the rally right to the downtrending 20-day moving average, and then it got sold off again. It hit it, sold, and then Friday, this is where we were yesterday, had the sell-off, had more selling. Now, the thing is, with this, with this Russia thing, you never know what kind of news is going to come out over the weekend. So people kind of get prepared on Friday. They sell positions or they even take short positions, bearish positions, in case some, some more really bad news comes out over the weekend. And, you know, as of now, today's Saturday morning here where I am, you know, things don't look so good. You know, Russia's still there. They're still bombarding things. They're bombarding civilians, which is not a good thing. And this is going to cause more fear over the weekend. So probably Monday we may see a more movement to the downside. Um, you know, until things become clearer, you know, the first course of action is people sell first and then they ask questions later. So we may see some more selling come in on Monday and then we'll go from there. It depends what kind of news is coming out over the weekend. Sunday night, the futures markets open up 6 p.m. Eastern time. So we'll see how that occurs. Uh, that's tomorrow, Sunday evening, March 6. But the way it looks right now, you know, the market is in this downtrend right now. Had the big gap down here, did rally, but you know, people got this got this relief rally and it gave people a second chance to sell or to get out of positions right here where it connected with this downtrending 20-day moving average. So we may see some more selling come in early in the week. If things could turn a corner, if, if, if you know, Russia and Ukraine could come to some kind of resolution, the market's going to rally really hard. It will because a lot of this down, down movement is because of the 
the Russia invasion. And once that's over, once that uncertainty is over, the market will rally. And then we'll get back to the items that have been driving part of the selling in the first place, which is inflation, the U.S. Federal Reserve getting ready to raise interest rates, um, the supply chain issues, all that stuff, which will get solved over time. And that'll give the market more um It'll give the market a better feeling that those things will resolve themselves soonish in the near future, and they can, you know, get back to concentrating on the underlying fundamentals of the company and move the market back higher. I have no doubt that the market will move back higher because that's what the market does over time, right? So if we go and look at a monthly chart, let me pull up the monthly chart here. I got to move myself out of the way for a second. The monthly chart. We look at the long-term trajectory of the market. The market goes up over time. It has and always will because that's what the market does when you have profitable companies inside of an index. Profitable companies have profitable, um, they sell goods that people want to buy. So their earnings goes up, their revenues go up, everything goes up within that company. And that's why the stock market goes up in the long run but in the short term as we're talking there's always going to be news headlines there's always going to be another story and then that story goes away and another story comes out but in the long run the market will go up so i have no doubt that the market will go up again when soon at some point after the news items gets resolved and people realize that a lot of stocks are on sale a lot of quality companies that have been trading lower are worth buying again So the market will turn higher. Will it happen next week? Don't know. But what the charts are telling me right now is that there could be more selling, right? If we want to draw another type of pattern here. So here, let's let me do a little something. So this is what you do. You have to draw trend lines. I'm going to take away the congestion pattern. So the price action tells us where the market's been going. It had been going up. You can draw a channel. If you want to draw a really long channel, you can see the market's been in this nice channel going upwards, right? And then now we have a downtrending channel, okay? You connect the tops. You connect some recent bottoms. It's sort of in the eye of the beholder, okay? You want to connect some recent lows. So what we have here now is the market is in this downtrend. Typically, once it forms a new pattern, a downtrend, it will try to st- it'll stay in that in that channel until something comes along and moves it in a different pattern. So for now, we have to respect this downtrend. The market may drop all the way back down, may even go past this low that was made uh, last Thursday, uh, or it may rally up to the downtrending line first, right around maybe 440 and then drop down again, or it may blast up through the channel and start a new uptrend. So you have to watch the channels and see where the price action goes. Now, if you're not sure what to do, then you just sit out and you don't do anything yet until a new defined trend shows itself. So for me, I like to be bullish, I like to be long. I don't have any short positions right now. That's just not how I operate. So for me, what I'd be waiting to see is for the price action to get above and outside of the downtrending upper edge of this channel, which would be, you know, above 440 in the SPY or 4,400 in the the S&P index itself. Um, And then like to see some action moving higher. And then we can start drawing an uptrending channel. But for now, the big question is, if it goes higher, will it bounce and get knocked back down if it comes up to resistance on the top line here. Or Monday, we might just see it move straight down towards the bottom edge here. We don't know yet, okay? Um, But the news over the weekend with Russia, you know, things don't look that good right now, so I'm kind of leaning more towards maybe some more selling come early in the week. Or Or if we do get a rally, will it be contained by this top edge of the channel? That's what I'm looking for, okay? So let's like it, let's look at the NASDAQ. And we use the, the triple Qs to help us gauge what's going on there. The NASDAQ's been getting a, hit a bit harder because of these tech stocks and, and these, these Momo stocks that, that just really move on hype and, and momentum and a lot of people just jumping in because it's, you know, 
a, a popular stock or you know a hype stock. And so these can get hit a lot harder on the way down as well. So we also have the congestion pattern, but we're going to take that off and we're going to draw some new trend lines as well. So now we have this, we have the new downtrend here. Okay. This kind of steep downtrend. We can draw the lines here. Okay. It kind of looks like the SPY. So now we're in the downtrend and same thing. If the market opens up weak on Monday, it, it'll probably set its sights on the down part of the channel here. Or if it rallies, will it get rejected at the top edge here? If it could blast through, so now we're looking at maybe the 345 area on the QQQ. We want to see it get out and above and want to jump above the downtrending line. So trading out up here somewhere and have a couple days, you know, a week's worth of movement up to the upside. And then maybe we can decide, okay, maybe we're, we're out of the downtrend and starting a new up leg. So it's yet to be seen and it's, and it's okay to be on the sidelines until a defined trend occurs. Now, if you, if you play the short side, if you're selling stocks short or you're buying put options, then that could be the play for you because if the market has more downside to go, then buying put options could work. I don't play the bearer side all that much because the market doesn't spend a lot of time going down. Yes, we have this quick, these quick spurts, these really large spurts to the downside, which could be good if you're if you're nimble and you know how to play to the short side. For me, I just don't. I'm long term, I'm long term bull, and I just wait for the setups to occur. Now, in our newsletters, we have two newsletters. They're both neutral to bullish type of newsletters. We sell puts and we sell put option credit spreads. So we're really light on both of those. And in, in, in the put selling newsletter, we have no positions on because it doesn't make sense to take positions when the market's in a downtrend. We want to wait for the market to show us that it's going up. Then we sell put options. In our, in our spread newsletter, we only had two positions on and we got out of one just yesterday because the market wasn't looking good for us. We decided to get out. So we're playing light. We're, we're treading lightly here. We're watching. And I'm waiting for the market to turn around before we deploy more capital into the market. Okay, that's just the way we're playing. So the, the, the S&P 500, the, the NASDAQ in this downtrend, we're waiting to see it come back out and above. Um, so now let's take a look. We can even look at the Dow Jones. We use the diamonds, DIA. That's the symbol of this uh, exchange traded fund. Now the Dow's been holding up pretty good versus the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. It's sort of been in this, see these, these two blue lines that I've drawn. So here's the channel that the Dow is in. It popped down below it. This was that big down leg that we saw in the other two charts. But it, it's been holding this level pretty good here. So I'm hoping, and, and once again, you can also draw the downtrend here as well. You got the lines here. So we've got two competing things here. We've got this support area right around, you know, the low 330s, $330 on the DIA, the diamonds. And we have this downtrend channel. So which one, which one wins out? Will this support hold here? And it doesn't really look too far below from where it's currently trading. Or will it blast through the support and head towards the lower edge of the channel? Or will it go up and find resistance here and then get knocked back down? We don't know yet. So sometimes patience is key. A lot of watching is key. You know, and I got a lot of people tell me they just want to get in. They just want to do trades. They're impatient. They want to they want to use their capital. They want to make money. They want to make trades. And I try to tell them, you know, being on the sidelines is OK. You don't have to put money in the market all the time, especially when you're not sure what's going to happen. You know, that's just you're, you're setting yourself up for a lot more risk. You're setting yourself up for potential losses because. It, you're just not sure which way the market's going to go. If you don't have an idea where it's going, why would you want to deploy capital? That's just me. That's just my opinion. And I understand people get, you know, they have a, you know, they're, it, they're itching to get in there. They want to do something. And so if you're going to do that, just make sure you know what you're doing. All right. So that's the the Dow through the through the diamonds. Let's take a look at, at individual stocks. Um, actually, let me, let's bring up the VIX real quick. Let's look at the VIX. We look at the VIX a lot. We talk about the VIX. The VIX is the fear indicator, the fear index. It's also a measure of implied volatility of the front month S&P 500 options. So the VIX is, is a measure of how expensive or inexpensive options contracts are. And it also tells us what's happening in the mood of the market, the psychology of the market. When the, when the stock market sells off, the VIX 
goes up, meaning there's more fear out there. People are selling their stocks. People are buying put options for downside protection. And that drives the price of options higher. Okay, there's more demand. There's more demand for put options, which drives the price of all options, calls and puts higher. That's how the VIX works. And so when there's more fear, the VIX will go up. And when there when there's you know um, contentment in the market, everyone's happy and the market's just kind of going up nice and slowly, then the VIX trades at these very low levels. But what we see over time is that the VIX will have these spikes. We've talked about this before. You get these spikes a couple days worth, a couple weeks worth, when there's a lot of selling in the stock market. And when that ends, then the VIX will come off. So now the VIX is actually trading at a pretty high level. And the VIX is actually in this uptrend. We can even draw the, you know, a channel on the VIX. It's got, you know, it's kind of hard sometimes to draw trends here. But, you know, currently the VIX is in this uptrending channel. It could keep going up if the stock market keeps going down. So we got to keep an eye on the VIX. But if you're an option seller, when the VIX is high, it's typically a better time to sell options, but it's also a more risky time to sell options because the, it all depends on how the stock market does. So you got to be really careful uh, when you're trading you know, the VIX in that way. But typically, I would have liked to have seen a pullback in the VIX by now because all these other spikes have just been short periods of time. But this one's kind of lingering. You know, we're not even we're not in a spike anymore. We're actually in a in a sort of an uptrending movement here. That means the stock market has been selling off for quite a while now. So what we need to see is that stock market get the nice jump and the VIX will come off. Uh, but this leads me to believe that there may be more selling in the general stock market and the VIX may have some more to go to the upside. So we keep an eye on the VIX. Let's talk about some commodities here because I've been having some interest in, in, in commodities late because commodity prices have been skyrocketing now because Russia is one of the biggest exporter or grower of wheat around the world. So wheat prices have just been skyrocketing. Soybean prices have been skyrocketing. Let's take a look at, at, at some wheat futures. And we'll see what's happening there. I'm getting ready to, I like to take some, a bearish position in wheat very soon. I already have a bearish position in soybeans, soybean futures options. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the front month or continuous contract of wheat futures. And you can see there's just this massive move higher. Now you see this little, you see this little, da this little dash right here is actually where um, this is called limit up. The wheat futures on Friday went limit up, meaning it went to the maximum allowable price that can trade during the day. Futures contracts have, have, a, have a limit price where it can't trade anymore for that specific day. And in the wheat futures, it's uh, seven, uh, is it 75 cents? I'm trying to remember because it's been a long time since I've traded these things. So you can see right here, 750 points. That's where the market was up. Wheat futures were up. So that's, it jumped from the day, the closing of the day prior to the, to, to yesterday, Friday, and it couldn't go any higher and it wasn't being sold off. And so we look at the one minute chart, you can see if it'll bring it up. So you can see here's, it's up 75, the maximum. So the whole day it stayed at the maximum limit. Um, so come Monday or Sunday evening, these futures trade Sunday evening as well. What you'll see is it'll probably jump maybe another 75 ticks or 750 ticks to the next level uh, if people are still scared and, they, and they're trying to buy this thing up. So this has gone limit up. You can see just over a span of a couple days, this is one day's worth. Each one of these bars is one day's worth of trading. It just ramped up because that's what's happened. And, you know, people are getting scared for wheat um, supply coming out of Russia. And they don't, and people think that there's going to be little supply, so they're buying it up now. Demand is outpacing supply in, in the futures market right now. So we'll see. Uh, I'm waiting for this thing to possibly hit a top. I'm going to buy some deep out of the money put options. You know, I'm taking a speculation here, a gamble that this thing's going to collapse. Once this Russia thing is over, these prices are going to collapse, drop back down. So I'm buying some. Something that, that I tell everybody not to do, I'm buying some deep, out-of-the-money, cheap put options. And hopefully that this thing will collapse and I'll make a little money. Same thing with the soybean futures. So let's take a look at soybeans. These are the futures markets. These are not stocks. 
There's a futures market. Let me see, did I type that in correctly? Hang on, type that in wrong. Soybean. Okay, so we got some soybean futures. This is a front month soybean soybean futures. That has rallied as well, not as severely as 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 wheat, but I, I bought some put options on soybeans as well, hoping for a pullback. You can see the RSI has gotten oversold here, hoping for this thing to drop, and maybe make a few bucks on this thing. But anyway, so I've been keeping an eye on that. Haven't I've been haven't really traded commodities in a long time, but you know I keep an eye on things. I look at commodities like corn, soybeans, and wheat, and coffee, sugar, cocoa, cotton, and orange juice, gold and silver, crude oil, natural gas. About a handful, you know, maybe a dozen commodities that are worth taking a look at. All right, so let's take a look at some individual stocks as we usually do. Let's start with AMD because I always, I talk about AMD quite a bit here. Semiconductor chip stock, computer chip stock that I like. Um, you know, more than Intel, AMD has really come on as a player in the last five years or so. And I've been in these last few videos, I've been telling everybody that I, that I've been nibbling down here at the bottom. Here's your 200 day moving average. It had fallen below bounce, fallen below bounce, fallen below. I've been a buyer between hundred and $110 per share, nibbling, buying some shares. What's been happening here. It fell down again. Will we have, will the support hold here? So we can kind of draw maybe a support line here. Um, I know in the long run, I'm a bull on AMD in the long run. For now, it's getting hit, but I'm, I'm accumulating a little bit here, hoping for the rebound. Uh, I had mentioned, if you follow me on Twitter, I had mentioned yesterday that um, the put options, the April put options for AMD, the, the $60 put options, I tried to sell some for 25 cents a contract yesterday, did not get filled. But, you know, here was my thinking. AMD is at $108, $107 a share. Here's the $60 level right here. You sell some put options down here. You're either going to just collect the money or, you know, in the next month and a half, what is the chance of AMD stock falling all the way down to $60? It's another 44% drop that AMD would have to undergo in order for me to have to fulfill my obligation and buy AMD at $60 a share. Some of you know what selling put options is about. You can you set yourself up to buy quality stocks at below market prices and collect a premium while you're waiting for that to happen, if that ever happens. So I'm taking a risk where I don't think AMD is going to fall another 44%. I, prior, I sold some 60 put options prior um, price. These the prices have gone up, so I figured maybe I'll try to sell a few more. Didn't get filled. But anyway, $60 is the strike price I was looking at for the April options. If you follow me on Twitter, you would have seen my post from yesterday. But this is AMD. I'm hoping the, the, the support will hold here. And if it doesn't, the next line of support's right around $100 a share. We'll see what happens with AMD. But all stocks are getting hit now, regardless. Regardless of whether it's a good stock or not, a lot of stocks are getting hit. Let's look at Walmart. I talk about Walmart too. I've been buy and a, I've been a buyer of Walmart at the $135 level because that's where this long-term support seems to have been coming in, right? And then look where uh, Walmart closed yesterday, a little bit under $143 a share. So it bounced pretty good right off this 135 level. It did fall down through it, but they couldn't push it down anymore, so it rallied back up. Walmart was up over $3.50 a share yesterday while everything else was dropping a lot. You know, there were some stocks that were up yesterday. Let's see, see if we can find some. So Walmart's there. I, I'm, I'm a holder of Walmart for the long run. Um, what else? I, some of the, some of the healthcare stocks were up. Um, Pfizer, you know, you know, here's a, here's a perfect look at this, just this, this perfect downtrending channel. You can see this right here, right? It's just in that downtrending channel. But it, 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 it might be finding support right at the 200-day moving average. It had, it had fallen through it just a couple days, but bounced. So right now, it's, it's, it's coming up right on this upper leg of the downtrending channel. Will it get knocked back down, or will it pop through it and continue up? That's what should be decided in the next few days. Um, what else? Bristol-Myers. We're going to look at some healthcare stocks. Bristol-Myers has just been on this nice run higher, just bucking the trend of everything. Johnson & Johnson kind of meandering along. Merck. We're looking at some healthcare stocks now. Merck kind of in the middle here. 
GlaxoSmithKline actually has been on the down move. I'm not sure why this one's bucking the trend to the downtrend. Has now fallen um, clearly below the 200-day moving average here. Right here, this was Friday, yesterday, March 4th. It's got to drop down here. So I'm not really sure what's happening with Glaxo. Let's take a look at Microsoft and we'll move on to different sector here. Microsoft has fallen, is in this, you can see it's in this downtrending channel. Um, probably will stay in this channel for a while until it starts to move higher. Intel, I, I told you, I don't really like Intel that much compared to AMD. Intel's just, you can see the movement's downward. This is what's called looking at the price action. Intel's in a down move. Do you want to get long Intel here? It's just going, it's showing you it's in a downtrend. Why put your money at play when it's clearly in a down move? Sure, you can try to pick bottoms that you want, but something like AMD, on the other hand, you can see it's clear to been more in an uptrend, you know, down here recently, but over the longer term, it's been, it's been moving higher, right? Um, things like NVIDIA, you know, a lot of these high tech expensive stocks, NVIDIA has been in this downtrend for a while now moving down. Let's look at Amazon, Amazon still, still, you know, and now it's starting to get really ugly looking. Amazon had been in this channel for a very long time, got into a smaller, tighter channel here. And then all this junk starts to happening. I drew this bullish flag pattern very recently hoping that it would pop to the upside it just dropped to the downside so this really negates this negates the um the bull flag so let's get rid of this because that's not helping anymore sometimes things work and sometimes they don't it's not a guarantee to work so this is amazon just kind of looking ugly i can't really make heads or tails of it right now tesla not every chart's gonna show me something and so I move on. Tesla holding, really trying to hold the support at the 200-day moving average. The 200-day moving average is really an important level. So Tesla's trying to hold. What can we glean from this chart? Well, you know, it, I, I'd say it's more uh, more in a downtrending channel right now. So kind of use that as a gauge. Somebody might see something different than what I see. You know, people people see other things. This is what I'm seeing right now. So Tesla is going to have to fight the 200 day moving average will it hold or will it head down to the downtrending part of the channel yet to be seen okay um let's take a look at some other stocks we're already at 32 minutes here um nike oh, we'll look at nike and disney two stalwart companies some of the best brands in the world known worldwide this is nike it's clearly in a downtrend Looking to drop below this 130 level here. This could be, if this support is broken around 130, this thing could drop another $10 probably. But Nike in the long run, how can you go wrong with, with buying shares of Nike in the long run? Let's take a look, see what the, let's see what the monthly chart looks like. If I can, let me move myself here real quick and then I'll move back. Okay, so Nike, obviously, I mean, look at, look at the way it's been going. Okay, all time new highs very recently is on a pullback. So this is the monthly chart um, falling below the, the 20 month moving average. And it's just kind of in no man's land now. Could it fall all the way down to the, the 50 month moving average here, which is probably around one hundred and seven and a half dollars? Hard to say. But, you know, on the, on the daily chart, it's got it's in a clear downtrend here. Right. And three days right at this level. It, it could drop on Monday and, and, and fall through it. So keep an eye on Nike. Let's look at Disney, the other stalwart. Disney, I mean, talk about historic uh, worldwide brand name company. Just in a downtrend. I, I told you I've been nibbling on some Disney. Last time it got down to 130, I bought some shares. Will I get another chance to buy some more? Possibly. I mean, everything's in a downtrend right now. This chart's kind of ugly got a gap here that got filled. I don't know. Disney is just not a lot for me to go on, on, on typical technical analysis. You know, we got maybe a channel here. I don't know. Some people, uh, I'll show you another thing that people will might see, take this off. We could be seeing a, a, a reverse head and shoulders forming where you got a shoulder here, you got a head here, and then maybe another shoulder forming here, which will be a bullish move, right? You got a shoulder, head, and a possible shoulder. And that's a bullish, it's called reverse head and shoulders, and that could typically move the stock higher, 
So that hasn't fully been developed yet, but it could be. So the people see different things. Um, what else we got? Um, let's see, let's see. Cisco meandering around. Where's Oracle? Oracle kind of in a downtrend. Mm, okay, so let's look at Netflix and we'll look at Facebook because these, these are the stocks that got hit really hard. So Netflix fell, had the relief bounce up to the 20-day moving average, and now is back down to um, getting close to the lows of $350 a share. Could be a triple bottom. If the market could find its, bo its footing here, this could be a triple bottom, which is more of a bullish indicator. If not, it can, it can keep going. What's the next level of support? I don't even know. $300 would be the next level of support. So that'd be another, you know, $60 it can fall. But it may find support here. Let's draw a quick line here right around this, this level here. And we'll see if that holds this week or, you know, into the future. Maybe it'll try to hit it a few times and then it, it can't get through it and then it'll bounce. So that's Netflix. Let's look at Facebook. Another big one. Facebook had the big drop like Netflix had a little bit of a relief rally, but starting to turn down again. So, you know, Facebook doesn't look all that good either. I'm not a huge fan of Facebook to begin with. Um, let's look at Pepsi. Oh, Pepsi and Coke. We like to talk about Pepsi and Coke. Uh, Pepsi, relatively strong, has the pullback here. So once again, we draw the channel. Pepsi's in a little bit of a down channel, downtrending channel. I'll make it easier here, here, and here. Okay, so it's got the channel, but it's got the 200 day moving average lurking down here, hopefully for support. Coca Cola, on the other hand, much strong, stronger and very strong compared to the overall market. Coca Cola, another stalwart, great dividend payer, um, hitting all time new highs right here. This all time new highs. Let's take a quick look at the monthly chart. And I know we're getting long in this video. Yep. Coca-Cola, all-time new highs just this week. So that's it. Coca-Cola looking pretty good. McDonald's, um, clearly in a downtrend, has fallen below the 200-day moving average. Kind of a waterfall, really quick, sharp move down. Um, it will find support somewhere. Could have a little more downside to go. Um, McDonald's will eventually turn back higher. But when? Don't know. Twitter getting down on the lows here looks like it could have another move downwards google i don't really track google all that much um yeah ebay i'm looking at some of these now alibaba people like to fall it just keeps going down talk about a, a stock that's in a downtrend just keeps going down you know you, wh why do you want to deploy capital in, in into a company that's showing you it's clearly in a downtrend you want to wait for it to move upwards for a period of time before getting in on the long side. That's just smart investing. Um, okay, so, oh, we got Clorox, mm, still in the lows, Colgate in a downtrend. All right, now we're getting long here, 38 minutes. Let's wrap it up. We'll, we'll look at the SPY one more time, the SPY, just for a gauge for next week. As I talked about, could see some more downside heading down towards the lower leg of the channel here. I really don't want it to go down there along with everyone else. Let's get some good news out there in the world and, and see this thing pop back higher. All right, that's it for the Saturday chart synopsis. Um, let's take a quick look at our website, smartoptionseller.com. Okay, that's where we're at. We talk about selling put options, selling put option spreads. Go to our website, get our free ebook, learn how to sell put options, our put selling basics ebook right here. Go to our website, put your name, email, email address, we'll send you a copy. If you're looking for more, here's our services tab. We have two newsletters and our one-on-one -on -one coaching if you need some help getting to the next level um, of your options trading. All right, that's all for me today. 39 minutes. Goodness, this is getting long, probably the longest one I've ever made here. Hope this has been helpful. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Leave me a comment in this YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Send me an email. I'll always try to answer. And that's it for me. I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week, and I hope to see you back here next Saturday. This is Lee Lowell signing off.